I'm Ash from Droning On and in this video we'll be looking at an essential bit of kit. Ask most drone or quadcopter pilots what they can't fly without. Some will say batteries, but actually you can have a big box of batteries but if you haven't got a charger you're not going to be flying. I've had mine for a few years now and I've just replaced it with one from Gearbest. This is the Sky RC Q200 and it's got some really special features. Enjoy the review and please subscribe. So this is how it arrives from Gearbest. Let's have a look at what's inside. There it is. So we've got a nice looking box here. Um, it looks fairly good quality actually. Um, box is a little bit battered, but hey, that's uh, transport and shipping for you. Um, overall, nice solid packaging, um, not a bad looking box. Let's open it up and see what's inside. So we first of all have a manual, that's a fairly big comprehensive manual there actually, so that's good. There is the charger, wow it's big. So in the pictures this actually looks like quite minuscule, quite micro, but actually when you get this in, in your hands it's, um, it's big and it's heavy, but remember that this is quite a flexible charger, it's an AC or DC charger and via AC it's maximum output is 200 watts, so we've got a lot of power here. Um, and clearly it charges four batteries in parallel, so, uh, and also more in fact if you use a parallel charger board. So I guess you couldn't really ever expect this to be a small unit. Other bits in the box, we've got a power cable, which is an American one. Ah, I'll plug uh, my own into it. Um, we've got uh, a balance board and a cable for each battery that it supports. And we've also got some banana plugs with the standard sort of regular 3-4 cell uh, plug on the end as well. So that's good. We've also got one here, or two in fact, which doesn't have plugs on the end. So that's kind of nice actually. You're not always going to be charging batteries with this type of connector. So it's nice that it gives you a couple which you can put your own connector onto the end. So let's take a look at the actual charging unit. So we've got a nice big screen here, it's a colour display. On the left hand side we've got a list of the supported batteries. I note that that list includes the new high voltage batteries, the LIHV. And for each of those formats it takes up to six cells. On the right hand side we've then got the input, so it does support AC or DC input. Um, do note that there are some wattage and ampage uh, limitations depending on which input type you use. Uh, the wattage um, and the maximum amps does vary per channel as well. So for example, when connected via DC, we can only use up to 10 amps on A and B, whereas channels C and D support a maximum of 5 amps. So be careful, especially if you're connecting parallel boards to any of these inputs and outputs. We then got a set of buttons, the channel A, B, C, D button here is for switching between the configuration of each of the ports here, we'll show you that in a bit. Look at the back, so this isn't your standard kettle lead connector here, this is quite an odd uh, plug, you often see these on laptop power supplies, I'm not sure why they went with that rather than the traditional kettle lead. On and off button and then there's your DC input, so you can plug a, a alternative uh, field charging supply into that. Then looking around on each side, so we've got a big fan there for cooling, um, banana plug connectors here and also a balance port. So into those ports we'll be connecting in, first of all, one of these balance ports if the battery has a balance connector. We'll also of course be connecting in the banana plugs um, like that. There we go. It's quite nice as well that the banana plugs actually come with these little white clips so that rather than having to insert these individually you can just plug them in quickly like that. Um, on the front we've then got a Again, another set of connectors for two more batteries. Um, also worth noting that for each battery you'd also get a little temperature sensor port if you choose to use it. There's a PC link socket here which is a micro USB port. That's great because you can plug this charger into your computer and monitor the voltage, the ampage, the wattage and how much time is left, even control the battery charging uh, and the memories from a piece of software. So that's really nice. It also has a USB port which of course you can use for charging mobile phones um, or perhaps also charging tiny whoop batteries via a dedicated USB charger. 
And then on the right hand side, the final set of charging ports for the battery and another fan. So lots of cooling on this device, which is good because clearly it's potentially gonna get quite hot. Let's power it up. Okay, so as a test, I've got two batteries here. They are 1.3 Graphenes from Turnergy. Um, these are lovely little batteries. They're also great value. What I'm gonna do is charge one of them and I'm gonna discharge the other one just to show that this charger can be used for multiple functions in parallel. So I've connected one battery on one side. On the other side, I'll connect the other. Like that. Okay, there we go. So two batteries are now connected. So now to navigate through the interface here. So we are gonna use A and we're gonna charge this one. So let's set it to balance charge. We're gonna charge it at 1.3, which is 1C. Now, if ever in doubt about what, what rating or ampage to charge your batteries, use 1C. So 1300 pack, so we're gonna charge it at 1.3. Uh, it's a four cell, so we're gonna leave it on that setting. Press and hold. It checks the battery, which is good. It checks the voltage, etc. It gives us confirmation before we want to start. We're going to say, yep, yeah, carry on, and off it goes. It's telling us that the battery is currently at 28% charged. Um, we've got the values here, so you can see at the moment it's just starting off now. There you go, we're at 15.11 volts at the moment. So that's really nice. If we page through now whilst it's charging, we can see the individual cell voltages as well within the battery. That's nice. If you impact a battery, if you have a crash and you damage the battery, you want to be sure that your cells are charging at the correct level and that there's no loss of power or leakage there. Um, so this is good. You can just see that your cells are charging evenly. So yeah, really nice. So that's one charging. I also noticed that the, the charger was absolutely silent until we started the actual charging. So the fan isn't going all the time. It's only going when there's something happening. So I'm gonna switch to channel B now, which is this side. I'm gonna set this one to LiPo. I'm gonna set it to discharge. Actually, no, let's set it to storage and see what it does. So I'm gonna set that down to Again, 1.3, it's a four cell LiPo. Press and hold, starts the battery check. Confirm, yep. And there we go, it's now gonna cycle that battery down to a safe storage level. And we could carry on for the other two channels. It's really nice, this ability to charge and discharge batteries in parallel. I've not had that before, other than using a parallel board. Uh, but I trust this, this is far safer because each of these circuits are unique and individual. So therefore they have their own distinct protection. So whilst that's going in the background, I'm gonna show you a really nice feature here. Um, this is the Bluetooth connectivity with the charger, which is a really novel idea. So I've downloaded an app called the Q200 app, and I'm gonna fire that up now. This is the first time I've started this up, and it's looking for charger. So it uses Bluetooth to find the charger, and there we go, it's found a charger. I'm gonna select that one. It's now saying, please wait. Um, please set up your password. I'm going to ignore that just for now. Interesting that it even has a password protection. And there we go. Now, th that was so easy. You don't have to pair it. You don't have to turn on Bluetooth on the charger. It's just that easy to set up. Now I've got a status of my charger. So you can see here that um, this one is um, currently balanced charging. Um, if I go to channel B, this one is on storage discharge at the moment and all of the statistics and details are there. That's really, really cool. Um, now, maybe I'm not quite sure how useful this would be, but you've also got stop. So I can actually stop it from here. And there you go. The charge has just beeped and the charging has now stopped on there as well. Yep. So you can see now only B is going. So if I now switch on my phone to B and then get the details, there we go, and press stop, and then look at the charger. There you go, channel B has also stopped as well. So this app is a really nice feature. I'm not sure how useful it would be. Perhaps if you're um, in another room in the house and you wanna see how your charging is progressing, then at least you can do that. 
But here's another really useful feature. So if we go to program at the bottom here, let's say you've got lots of batteries, you're tired with your charger of having to every time set how many cells, set the charging ampage, etc. With this feature, for charging uh, A, profile A, support A, we're gonna add a memory setting here. I'm gonna input one of these batteries actually so that they're in there for quick reference. I want it to balance charge. They are four cells and it's a lithium polymer battery. Hit save. I want it to charge them at 1.3 because they're 1300 milliamp batteries. Voltage cutoff 4.2. <clears throat> I'm gonna leave that as it is. Save that. And now I've got a profile there. The benefit here is that next time I need to charge one of these batteries, I plug it in and via the interface on the actual charger itself, I can set that profile immediately. You've got up to 10 profiles per port on the, on the charger. That means you've got 40 memories, which is really useful. Then we've got system on here. So I've got loads of safety things here, temperature cutoff, capacity cutoff, um, resting time between cycles. You know, so they've really thought about safety on this. It's not a cheap budget charger. Um, all of the buzzers, the notifications when it finishes charging, I can turn all of that off via this app. That's really cool. And it's also worth saying as well that there is a Windows-based application as well that you can access all of the same functions by plugging into the USB port into your laptop or your PC. So really, really nice functionality there. Really impressed with that. So that's the Q200 made by Sky RC. It retails for about £135, which is about $150 from Gearbest. And I can't really fault it. Besides the fact that it doesn't have a touch screen, that would be lovely. But I can excuse that by the fact that it has a really good Bluetooth app and you can connect this via USB to your computer as well. It charges four batteries at the same time. It's really well made and solidly built and it has lots of safety elements as well, which is really good to see. It will also save you space because you won't be needing a charger like that anymore. It's all right, it landed on the sofa. Links to the products are in the video description as well as more information about the charger. See you in the next video and thank you very much for watching.